You can't give booze to Humpty Dumpty. Harvey Headbanger is a 1986 game, a 199 game from Firebird. I'm going to start off on the Commodore 64. And Harvey Headbanger and his mate Hamish look a bit like Humpty Dumpty. It's a one or two player game. And you be on joystick or keyboard. You are Harvey Headbanger. And basically, what you. What the instructions say is you. All you do is fight all day with your mate Hamish by bouncing around off of each other and then drinking a lot. So what you have to do is to trap your computer opponent or player two by putting your colour squares all around them. So you bounce around the screen and when you hit the edge you bounce in another direction. If you hit each other you are temporally immobilised. This is where the bars on the left, hand, right, left and right hand side come in. Because the more you drink of your coloured drink, the more that bar goes up, and the quicker you will recover from any collisions, which you can use to your advantage, because your opponent will still be immobilised. It's all very confusing. It's a weird, weird game, but once you get the hang of it, it's uh, it, it, it works okay. So I'm the blue character on the C64 here. And you can see me there going around. I'm just trying to avoid being trapped. So I my blue character turns the grid red. I can't drink those drinks because they're red. My opponent's coloured, so his bar goes up. Oh, it's confusing! If you encircle, and he's one there, if you encircle your opponent's squares, all those squares will turn into drinks that boost up your bar on the left-hand side. Abstract CPC version. This seems so confusing, and indeed the instructions really don't make much sense. The sense comes in playing the game. It's... And to make things even more confusing, you alter the game while you're actually playing it by holding down delete and then pressing, say, one level, keys one to five to change a level or going to two-player mode, you just press delete and caps lock. While the game is playing, not on the menu screen, while the game is playing, if things weren't confusing enough. This really is a classic case of a game that you, you have to play it before you understand what's going on. So I'm the blue character on the CPC. I'm up the top there. I've got a drink. I'm trying to go off, oh, banged into my opponent, so now we're both mobilised. You ha you can only drink your own drinks. If you drink the opponent's drink, you die. So I've made a square there. Look, there's four drinks there. Forded it on. Another drink there. He's got two. You just need to get him trapped in a in a. There you go, like that. That's how you do it. You've got to trap him. It, it's very simple when you get the hang of it, and you see it like there. All you got to do is get all of your squares around him, and you do that. Then he's trapped. There you go. Done it again. And you see all that confusion on the C sixty four version. Just now, I'm trying to explain it. As soon as you realise it is a simple case of trapping the enemy, then it becomes much easier. There are instructions on all these versions, well, apart from the C16, and the Spectrum version is especially easy to read, not. 
So here we are on the spectrum. Can you spot the problem? Can you? Yes, you can't tell who you are and who the opponent is. I... Now, I'm the one... Just on the... I'm trying to explain where I am on the map. I've just created a drink there. So I'm in the middle. Then I'm down to the bottom. Now I'm going up on the left-hand side. That's me. But it's impossible to <laughs> see the difference. Or see what the opposition drinks are. Because there's no colour. And now I've got to keep track of who you are. There's... I'm trying to spot what the difference is. Now I've picked up an opponent's drink and died. But it, it's ludicrous. Crash gave this good mark. They liked it. I just... I was speaking to Wills2K on Twitter before this and he said one of these versions is, is very good. And um, I think we know which one it is. This is just impossible. C16 running on my Commodore Plus 4. No, the only version without instructions in the menu screen. So I am blue. Picked up a drink there. And it's a very faithful port. The one thing I've noticed with the C16 version, there's five levels you can play the game at. In the C16 version, you have to select the levels from the menu. On the other versions, you can just change at any time. Computers one. Um, what I was going to say was, I think the AI on the C16 version is a little bit more advanced. He seems a little bit harder to beat. Off we go again. And there is strategy. Because you may want to build up your drinks power. The things on the left and right are supposed to be straws, by the way. You're supposed to build up your drinks power in order to mobilise your enemy for the largest amount of time. Because when he's flailing around, that's when you can you can potentially trap him easier. Especially on harder difficulty levels. The game has two player options on all of these versions. And I can see there could be hours of fun for two people. Um, I, I strongly suggest if Nicky and Bunty are listening, this would be a great game for a Friday night head-to-head. -head. And also take a drink in real life every time your character picks up a drink. And swing around from the ceiling when you win. Over to the BBC Micro version, running on my master, but in B mode complicated and this is a game that never had a physical release on the BBC at least as far as I can see but thanks to the guys on Stardot where I asked about this apparently the game was released as a download yes in the mid 80s as a download on Micronet where Firebird charged three pounds for it so if you're going looking for a copy of this on eBay you ain't gonna find one but it is effectively unreleased, given how few people had Micronet back in the day. But of course, it means we can enjoy it on our modern uh, MMC cards and SD cards and so on. But why would they hold back on a physical release in favour of sending to three people on Micronet? Hmm. So it looks very similar to the CPC version. Four colours, nice detailed graphics. I am red and the computer is blue. And oh yeah, someone on YouTube the other day in the comments said apparently I use the word attractive too much. It pops out like a zit all over my videos. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you so much. You know, it's like, should we script this stuff? I overuse words. I use pep and vim are the thing I'm using a lot of lately. So what? The game looks attractive on the BBC Micro. Deal with it. Now I'm going to leave to see if you can spot what the problem might be. What might the problem be here? As I go round and... There you go, I've trapped him. I've trapped the computer. 
And let's go again. Yes! There's no computer AI. The game is unfinished. You could play it as a two-player game with a friend. If you're a BBC micro owner, good luck with that. Ho oh, oh, ho, Amsterdam owner speaking here. We know what it's like. Um, but there is no um, computer AI at all. So the player two just bounces around aimlessly. Oh, such a shame. Such a shame. Someone, please hack this game so it's got some AI in there so you can play against the computer. Because this is a cracking conversion on the Beeb. It's just not finished. So let's try some of the higher levels of difficulty. Here we are on the CPC with level 4 out of 5. And the computer is much more aggressive now. He's swinging around. Just trying to get you. The game doesn't get more difficult if you're just on, say, level 1 and just playing more matches and like you know on level one the difficulty increases come by changing the difficulty level if you see what i mean there so he's my oh, i've been trapped level five on the commodore 16 version running on my plus four oh, bouncing bouncing into him Flailing around. Again, much more. He's, coming, he's really circling around next to you. So he's really coming for you. Such a simple game. Oh, no, he's beating me. Harvey Headbanger. Initially, it looks like a confusing game. The instructions don't really help. And then you play it for five minutes and then something clicks because you realise you're doing something right in order to win. And then you realise it's simply a case of blocking the enemy in with your own squares. So if you get your squares all the way around him, then you win. And that's all there is to it. There's five levels of AI, which means the game actually has quite a significant level of challenge as well as that two-player mode. The Spectrum version, I'm afraid, is hopeless. I just cannot tell my sprite from the computer, and, and I don't understand how Crash managed to give it such a good review. Am I missing something? C64 and CPC version are very good games. It's a great concept once you get your head around it, and it's a 199 game, so yeah, it's not going to be the most polished thing ever, and the music can get on your nerves a bit, and it's a bit plinky plonk, but it's still, I think, enormous fun. Very impressive on the C16 slash plus four as well. It's the kind of simple game that works fantastically on the more limited Commodore machine. And nice to see a title on there that isn't cut down from the other 8-bit versions. The BBC version, what a shame, because the presentation is nice, the game plays well, it's lovely and smooth, and that extra real estate on the screen the BBC has is being used to good effect but there's simply no player to AI an enormous shame while Harvey Headbanger may seem a little bit confusing and simplistic on first impressions actually when you get into it it's rather good fun and with five levels of difficulty and a two-player option as well I suspect this is a game you could return to again and again.